All right, so let's get a sense of what's going on at a macro level now. Clifford Bennett joining us from ACY Security. He is the chief economist there. Clifford, good to see you. Good morning, Andrew. So uh, what are we seeing with those yields at the moment? Because we did have a number of Fed speakers at the end of last mm. week saying, mm. you know, the market's still got the disconnect. You, you're, not, yes. you're not seeing what, what reality no. is, is reflecting well, I mean, at the moment. And markets are always wrong, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they've, markets have certainly got the macro picture wrong this year and they're playing catch up. Um, it's interesting to see that some Fed members are going, starting to say comments like that. You know, my forecast has been 5.75% for some time, well above even the Fed, uh, because, you know, the Fed's not very good at forecasting what it itself will do. Uh, so we need to make our own forecasts on that. But I do think inflation's core inflation particularly is going to be stubbornly high. And the end rate is much higher than the market is pricing. And that's only just beginning to be recognised in the stock market, which is why the stock market's beginning to fall. Uh, the economic data you just mentioned there, home builders down for the 12th month. We had at the end of last week, the S&P Global 500 PMI data for the United States. Composite index was in contraction and manufacturing were in contraction. So it's hardly the strong US economy that all those proponents of the look at the jobs data, look at the jobs data would have had us believe earlier in the year. All along, it's been a weakening economy with good jobs numbers. And I think that's what people need to know. I mean, the US could well achieve almost flat growth this year. It's up 0.4% for the first three quarters of the year, first two quarters being negative. Uh, and this current quarter could well be a negative GDP print as well. All right, so your, your expectation into the new year that that, uh, that weakness will continue or in fact accelerate, particularly I guess if we start to see those earnings come off. Yes, and I think uh, earnings have been a lag behind what consumer sentiment, business sentiment was actually doing. And I think this is true of all Western economies, uh, the UK, Europe and the USA, and to some degree Australia, uh, that really people are beginning to become extremely cautious on how they spend their money and where. Uh, there's a real disconnect, I think, between uh, lower income households and higher income households. Higher income households are still spending, but lower income households have been very hurt by high food and energy prices, energy prices coming off, of course, but now rents, services and other factors across the United States are looking very strong indeed. So this is why, even though the economy in the US is weakening badly, the Federal Reserve will keep raising interest rates. Uh, and the outcome is, as I like to say, not rocket science. Mm. It means a very deep recession for the USA. What's your expectation for the US dollar as to where that will track? It's a bizarre situation where the US dollar is actually entering, uh, I think I've mentioned on your show before, Andrew, a bubble phase where uncertainty across the Western world in particular is so intense now that there is a safe haven push towards the US dollar. The US dollar will also benefit from the higher yields. So you're going to have a country that's experiencing weaker, weaker, weaker economic activity, and yet its currency is going up in value. And that disconnect will stretch, I think, through 2023. But at some point, the US dollar might be one of the biggest bubbles we've seen in the last three, four, five decades. But for the moment, that bubble's still growing, and that will also hurt the US economy. The last time you were on, um, you're talking about the precious metals are looking quite attractive at the moment. Yes. I mean, if the US dollar remains elevated, though, I mean, what's how how uh, is gold in particular likely yes. to appreciate? By precious metals, I do only mean gold. Yep. Um, I do think gold is the backup. Uh, backstop, if you like, to the US dollar as a safe haven resort. So it will only be when the US dollar bubble bursts that gold will truly take off. But we're already seeing the gold market become a little more resilient to US dollar strength, bouts of US dollar strength. So it'll fall back on bouts of US dollar strength, but then it should stabilize to capitalize on periods of weakness because it'll be a zigzag motion, of course. But overall, I think people should look for uh, certainly gold in Australian dollar terms to skyrocket through next year. When you talk about the US dollar bubble bursting, mm. you're actually talking about bursting, not a gradual deflation. And what would no. the trigger be? I think that's always the $64 question. And sometimes I can tend to call these things a little bit early. I think for the moment, people should be focused on the US dollar will surprise to the upside. 
um, and I think at some point it could be a situation where the US economic data becomes depression-like, that's when there could be a run on the US dollar. So at the moment, people are discussing US shallow or deep recession. We were calling a recession from the end of last year. Um, whereas if it ever, if it does tip over, I think what we're gonna see is March, April, the Fed could pause. But the thing that would really hurt markets and the economy is after a pause, they again raised rates. Now that's something no one is factoring in, but it is, it is a possible ball game. All right, let's focus then on the Australian economy and what you're seeing here. Um, you're not ruling out recession here, but it's likely to fare better than its global peers. Is that your assessment? Well, Australia is beginning to fall off a cliff, I believe, in the domestic economy towards recession. I said we'd have a surprise recession. It's taking a little while, so it's not gonna be quite a surprise now. But I think there's probably a 65% chance that Australia will experience a recession in 2023. It's difficult for Australia to do well in a fast slowing, contradiction in terms, but a severe slowing of the global economy. It's difficult for Australia to do well in that environment. It's big hope, if you like, the big hope for the Australian economy is the Australian dollar continues to fall to 58 cents. Now at 58 cents, I think Australia could well be buffered in terms of exports to a slower global economy, uh, and that would support the domestic economy and keep us out of recession. So whilst everyone, I, I mean, we all suffer from an ego attachment to our currency, uh, but what would be good for our economy and our livelihoods is a lower Australian dollar at this point. Well, let's also look at part of that equation is China. What's your outlook there? I mean, a lot made of the reopening. Mm. We're seeing signs of that now. And of course, how important China is to the Australian economy. Yes. How does that people, factor? People try to be very binary on China, but it's actually a very complex state at the moment where the movement away from COVID is, there's still going to be the occasional COVID restrictions. So it's not gonna be a free running economy, a fully free running economy. But what I'm more concerned about with China is that it is being impacted in its exports already by a slowing global economy. So it will feel that. Uh, and China had also reached a peak or a maturity level in the development of uh, moving from agrarian to consumer society. So it's a long-term historic peak uh, in that shift, which means that they are going to be seeing more Western styles of economic growth going forward, and that's over the next 30, 40 years. So there's not gonna be a return to the boom status that we once saw in China, simply because it's grown now, the consumer economy is grown now to begin to saturate uh, that marketplace. All right, so as we end 2022, heading into 2023, you're, you're feeling a little uncomfortable then. As to oh, no, I'm place. very excited, Andrew. <laughs> right. We've had, we, I yeah. mean, it's been a bear market all year. I've been bearish all year. We've yep. made good money this year. People have to be able to sell to do well in these markets. It's, a, it's an absolute requirement to doing well in these markets. Moving forward, we're going to have big swings, both up and down. Uh, and people can't just sit on the sidelines and be saying buy the dip or what do we invest in now? Because if everything begins going down, it doesn't matter what you're invested in, you'll be losing money. I've advocated playing defense this year, even shorting the market. Uh, and I think going into 2023, if people don't want to be that, that aggressive, they should be a little bit circumspect of the outlook for the stock market generally globally this year, next well. year. Clifford, we have valued your input over the course of the year. Have a good break, enjoy the Christmas, and we'll, uh, we'll see you after Thank that. you, Andrew. All the best to the, you and the team. Thanks very yeah. much.